This skill video is about proof structure. Proof structure is a really nice guide because it often tells you what it is that you should do and it really helps in generating a show line. Sometimes you'll get stuck and you need a show line to get unstuck and proof structure is good because it tells you, well, if I need this, then this is going to be the right show line to do. Also, sometimes proof structure helps you because you may have options on how to proceed and it will actually tell you or suggest to you what the best option is. So let's take a look at the left side for now. Imagine that I have a show line somewhere, I don't even care what line it is, and I want to show P and Q or S arrow T. Now this is just to say that I really want what's here. So sometimes you'll see me do this on derivations, and I scribble off to the side, I want, and then I write out what I want. Well, this is sort of a waste of time a lot of the time, but I've gotten into the habit of doing this, so I actually do it all the time. I sort of just rewrite out what it is that I really want to show. And you should see that it's just a clone of this show line. But then I essentially do a parsing exercise, which we learned uh, back in Unit 2. And I'm going to identify the main connectives and break it down. So if this is my main connective, if I want to show, and if I really want a conjunction, well, I know that the conjunction introduction rule is uh, to join two things together, so I really need them. So this is sort of silly, but what this is really saying is if I want this AND, I really need P on its own, and I need Q or S arrow T on its own. So what I'm doing is a very informal sort of breakdown. Uh, and then this is okay, this is just P on its own, but then I look over here. If I want Q or S arrow T, what does this mean? Well, this really just means that I want Q or I want S arrow T. Why? Because the OR introduction rule just says I need one of those things. Now this is really helpful because it tells me that I really need to look for a P and I need to look for one of these. One of them, okay? So if I have a Q on the board and a P on the board, then I know I'm finished. Now I can even indicate to me how I would go back up into the line above. So if I got a Q, I would know that I should just add. And I like adding this little note here because it tells me, it reminds me what rule to use. And then if I somehow got the P as well as the Q or S arrow T, I would be able to move up here by using the rule ADJ. Now how do I get the S arrow T? Well to get this uh, from my sort of show line breakdown, and knowledge, and also from my conditional introduction knowledge, I know that I'll need a show line here. So I can put a little reminder that if I really want to find SROT, I'm going to need to write show SROT. And this will really help guide me in my derivation process. Let's take a look at another example. I'm not going to bother with the show. Pretend I just wanted this. If I want this statement, what is it that I need? Again, we do this little parsing exercise. So if I want to know Sorry, if I want to build a disjunction, I know I just need one side. But I don't really know which side. So I want this, or I want P by conditional negation Z. Okay, well, how do I build this W and X? Because this is a, uh, a conjunction, that means I need W and I also need X. Now I can put in my sort of instructions anytime I want. I know that if I get W and X, I can go up and adjoin. And I know if I got one of these things, I could go up by addition. But maybe I don't have the W or X on the board. Maybe I just have this. Well, this would tell me, well, to get P by conditional negation Z, proof structure tells me that I need two things. I need P arrow negation Z, and I need negation Z arrow P, because that's how you would build a biconditional. And the rule for this is I use conditional to biconditional, because that is the biconditional introduction rule. And so this is a nice handy tip as well. Uh, it just tells me that I need both of these. Now whenever I see a conditional, that means the introduction for those are shows. So if I don't have them already, I'm going to have to show it. And so this also tells me what it is that ultimately I need to find. I only need to go through one of these chains, because I know that this is an OR, and I just have to ask in my proof what do I have more of? Do I have W's and X's, or do I have P's and negation Z's? If it turns out I have P's and Z's, I go this route. If I have W and X's, I go this route. And that's really nice, because it just tells me what to do. 
So these are abstract skills. What I mean by that is I'm really ripping out these skills from an actual derivation so we can focus on understanding them. This way, when you see me do it in a derivation, you should have a much stronger idea of what I'm doing and why. But this is sort of a, a nice way of looking at it in isolation so you understand what I mean by proof structure. Proof structure tells you by the main connective of your show line or by the main connective of whatever it is that you want, how you ought to proceed or what your options for proceeding are so that you will be able to check off as you go what you have and look for the things that you don't.